Welcome back to another Trade Alts Technical Analysis video. Uh, it's a quick announcement before we get started. Obviously, we're coming into the end of the week. Um, for those of you who are in the VIP room and Discord, if you want to live stream tomorrow, let me know. I have some time. And uh, again, kind of seeing an uptick in volatility. Bitcoin's at a really interesting level. So I'd like to dive into those things in greater detail. But obviously, for this video, I'm going to try to keep it brief, try to keep it short. And uh, we're going to start um, with ES here, which we've been covering that. And we've had some pretty interesting price action this week. I've been a little bit busy, so I apologize not. Uh, I mean, not that I was necessarily intending on doing daily videos, but I was having fun doing it. Um, but anyway, from previous updates, you can see that these levels are pretty well respected. So I talked about this range. Obviously, like price broke below and you can see. Uh, if you zoom in a bit, how well respected this key level was, right? So we lost this key level. Price comes up, rejection, rejection, rejection. Just spends time underneath it, clearly rejecting before this nice flush to the downside. And then boom, this nice clean reclaim, right? So big flush to the downside. Um, comes up, takes everything out, and look. So you get the SR flip. So what was once resistance throughout here, big flush, reclaim. Back test as support a couple of times, gave you plenty of time to get in, and then boom, right up to our red zone of death, if you like to call it that. Um, essentially, the range value area had chopped around here for, for quite a bit. This is pretty good consolidation, to be fair. Um, and then started to break. And you can see once you broke this red box, right? Looking at that, look how strong the move to the upside was. Now, obviously, it's like lower time frame stuff. So it's not like overly exciting, but it's just interesting, right? To see where price comes. Um, you can, again, the key level, how price respected that very nicely. And then we come up to our kind of our red zone area, right? Look at the consolidation. Um, obviously a lot of time spent around here and then boom, you get the once you kind of bust through it, then nice move up. Broke your red zone, came back for your retest and then made a new high. So again, it's nice to see that respected, but now, um anybody obviously like getting overly bullish overly aggressive after this new high was taken out got a uh, kind of nice flush to the downside um we're funny enough like if you look at this high right here someone i'm going to point out so you look at this high right here and you look at kind of like where this low is if you look at the range value right the value area high where it comes in is kind of funny right so it's basically the value area high the range again which again i keep saying this over and over again but that's why i love volume uh, but just like there's there's definite reason um, to, to at least give you pause about like why why price is, is stopping at that point right or at least you're seeing a reaction out of there. Um, so anyway, like uh, to boil things down, keep it nice and simple. As long as you're above this red zone, which like I could flip this to green essentially, like you see that on my charts. Uh, I'm not gonna do that yet because I kind of want to see what happens here coming into the end of the week, see where we actually close. Did we close above or below? Um, going into weekly close, that'd be a bit telling to me, in my opinion. Um, but as long as we're above this red zone, generally look for continuation to the upside. Of course, we could, I mean, it doesn't mean that we can't come lower and and, and try to probe a bit, uh, probe some of these lower levels a bit first before that we move higher. But generally, as long as we're above the zone, I'm not looking for any like tremendous immediate downside. We start taking out this previous low from this morning and different story, in my opinion, right? Like, start, especially if we start to trade below here too much, then yes, like I would be looking for another retest of this key 4303 level and then kind of go from there, start to lose that, then yes, I would be looking for continuation lower. And this could end up being a pretty nice trap. Um, but it, but to be perfectly honest right now, it's like, this is a kind of a difficult area. And like looking at what price has done over the last couple of days, it's a little difficult for me to give any real more insight into it. Like I don't have much of an opinion Again, as long as we're above here, generally sideways to up is kind of what I'd be looking at. We start to lose this level, then yes, like I have a very clear level that I would be looking at to the downside, and then it's it's level to level for me, right? But anyway, yes, not looking too terrible, um, but really curious to see um, where we you know where we close the week at. We can touch on the t uh, the ten year for a second, just because I've been talking about it. Um, you see that we actually like this is like a, a nice swing failure pattern. Funny enough, <laughs> um, you had this pullback, right? And then you know below this four and three quarters level that we were like that we've been speaking about, 
actually came back up, ran the high, and then look at it like you had like a really big reversal, right? So it's kind of funny to see that. Um, that like SFPs, you know, this, this is the exactly that you would be looking for. And anyway, you're getting the pullback, still in their four and three quarters. Got a nice push back up today. Ultimately, though, again, as long as we're kind of below this general level, kind of you know, again, interested to see like where do we close the week at. Um, but I do think that you know we could get a bit more of a pullback here. Does it come all the way down here? So this is if you remember the 10 years, this is kind of like what I was when I was talking about the TLT trade, um, which I got stopped out for a very small loss. Um, but honestly, it still doesn't look that bad. Uh, my invalidation was really tight on there. And this was kind of like, to me at the time, it was kind of a coin flip. Let me take a sip of water. They didn't absolutely love it. Um, so I did, again, I did take a small scratch there. Um, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if you look at this parabolic trend line, it's been phenomenal support the entire way up. Um, I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if I at least came back down to test this, right? Which likely gives TLT a bit more life. So like if you check TLT, I've got a, a you know a, a decent pop to the upside. Um, it is pulling back a bit. Clear support to the downside for me is this 8180, and then below that, who knows? It's like I wouldn't like if that really starts to test this level, um, and you know it, it's not really well respected as a, as a support level. I mean, this thing could get this thing could continue to get you know uglier, right? Like you have like this reverse, or like this is a parabola, but to the downside. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, again, with this pop up, it's, it's, it's a pretty nice, you know, you got a nice pop. Do I think it come up to 91.85? Yes, I do. As long as TLT is under like four and three quarters, I think like you can see, um, again, like, especially you're getting that bit of, a, you know, that bit more pullback to test that, uh, the, the parabolic front line support then sure. Um, but at the moment, again, kind of the same thing, kind of in between key levels. Do I want to like, Take it like is is this interesting enough for me to want to take a stab out of here again? Probably not. Like I, I, you know, this is I'm either gonna wait for lower and test lower or look for, you know, again, look for continued relief and then maybe take a trade based off of that. So nothing too interesting there, but just kind of wanted to follow up from previous, again, previous uh updates that I've done. So on to the exciting, uh, at least what I exciting and what I mostly trade um these days is Bitcoin. So we kind of get here on lower time frames. It to me, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, as for and, and I'll kind of like try to walk you through like what I what I'm doing and kind of like how I see things. Obviously, um, I am short still. I've taken I've hit multiple take profits already on the way down. One of them that was this monthly naked point of control that I did call out in VIP. So like let people in the chat room know like we came into this level. It is like anytime you have a monthly naked point of control, it's a pretty big deal. Um, and you can see, like, again, as price comes into it, does it respect it perfectly flawlessly? No, but you can generally see, again, like, where are people, like, where are traders coming in to kind of, like, defend price, right? Like, it's pretty self-explanatory. So it's right, right around where your, your monthly naked point of control is. For the moment, um, that's that level is holding up decently as support. What I do see, though, and, like, this is pretty standard, um, is you kind of see, like, where this Wicklow was, on a nice you know a pretty nice intraday bounce here right you could have taken a night you could have had a nice scalp trade based off of this came back up and basically this is an old daily sr level now um this is an old but like the interesting thing about this and why it's still on my chart for now is really just to illustrate that like sometimes you know just because you go through a level for example like this daily is no longer valid but like it could be a nice resistance level on the flip side right so that's why that level is still on my chart but Again, kind of going back to like what I see here locally, I see this low, which is the initial flush down to clear up this uh, monthly naked point of control, got a, a decent intraday rally, and then boom, comes back down. And I think that you know, I'll say about this is this is a slightly higher low, right? So when I see this, the first thing that's going to come to my mind, and I look and kind of see like what price has done since then, is I, I do think that there's a pretty reasonable chance that at a minimum, so like if we are near a local bottom, right i think it's very i think it makes a lot of sense for price to actually come lower one more time and take both lows so again have like a swing failure pattern it's kind of essentially what i've been looking for um basically an sfp of of, of this that's going to run all stops right and then a nice reclaim and then you see something like that that is that's a pretty easy long setup right so again you want to see the wick below come in and essentially run this wick low 
And then if you do get that reaction, you get a nice strong bounce, nice strong reaction, re basically reclaims this naked point of control. To me, that's an interesting long position uh, with a very clear invalidation, right? So like you, if you saw something similar to this, where you got, again, got that wick lower, nice strong move to the upside. And then, you know, you start trading back above this monthly naked point of control. Um, at a minimum, like this is, this is like at a minimum what I would want to see. Um, but you have a pretty clear entry. You have a very clear invalidation. And then honestly, you could be targeting at a minimum, you could be targeting probably this high. So that's kind of like how I would look at this at the moment. Um, so yeah, as far as a long, like any intraday type long trades of interest to myself, that's kind of one that I would look at, like that I'm interested in for the upside. Um, again, so like, I still have a short position that I am holding. I've hit multiple take profits. Like I said, this one was a pretty big one. Um, and then to the upside, you know, so like, again, if we got that SFP type trade, phenomenal. Like, I would love to take that. If to the upside, basically, you know, coming into run, run, running back into these highs, let me make sure I have the right tool on, um, and then kind of dragging out like this golden pocket, right? From this high to this low, you can see you basically came up, gave you a 50% retracement so far, and then came back down. I would still watch this level. Um, and it's really going to be about the, the golden pocket to this naked point of control. So this is a daily naked point of control. Um, and, to, to, you know, again, as far as we're looking for lower time frame type trades, basically where I would be interested in taking a scalp long, I just explained that earlier, where would I maybe be interested in taking a scalp short of a second or a, a different position? Probably somewhere in this neighborhood. So essentially coming up, running this high, and then seeing, again, like, do we get you know do we get get a nice short squeeze up into this area uh, do we reject off of here yada 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 but again i think that this is an interesting level for again potential just looking for um uh, an intraday type scalp short where would i get a bit more bullish uh for bitcoin to me it's pretty clear it's above this key level um it really is slightly it would be nice to get higher to be honest like i'd want to see it like you don't i wouldn't want to see like a wick above and have like another type of swing fire pattern emerge from that because that wouldn't look as good but if it starts to reclaim basically takes out this this lower time frame structure high that you can see then yeah like i think that at that point it would start to look a bit better kind of the same story here by the way coming back into this range so like if i could back things up just a little bit and kind of like talk you through what kind of went went on over here. You had a very clear high, a very clear low. You had a very clear, so again, you had a golden pocket. I just don't have the yellow, like the golden zone, you know, like box that you see here. But you can very clearly see that it came right back up to your golden pocket and then got a pretty nice rejection. I actually like ran this high. So you got a nice SFP here, if you had seen that. So right here, price actually came back up. Slightly took it. What was it? Let me see. 746. So it took it by a dollar <laughs> and that's all it takes sometimes, but you can see this wick literally ran it, but just by a dollar. And then you got this big, like pretty big sizable move to the downside. Um, but anyway, you can kind of see like I pulled that, uh, pulled this fixed range. I'm pretty sure it was in the last update that I did too. Um, but once you got the move lower, right? Your bounce back up here, which became your new lower high on lower time frames, was basically the value area low. And like really like where the last support was. So again, you have like an area, you have this um, level at 27,350 essentially, like where like you can kind of see that price is trying to be the fan. And then once you lose it, you actually got that back test uh, to confirm this as resistance, but it was also basically the value area low of this range. And then the, you know, you're, you you got the, the nuke to the downside. So this white line that I have here at 27,746, part of the reason that that was there um is because to me this was like the last like as i'm like this would to be perfectly honest this is like a trailing stop so like as soon as we got the sfp here it started to move to the downside this became my new um for my short that i have from higher up this is where i'm hiding my short essentially like where my stop loss is as we start to break down um and then we make kind of this new structure right we came back up back tested the value area low confirmed that this was resistance before the big move to the downside this to me becomes kind of like another area to 
to base like like to essentially trail the rest of my stop on my short if that makes sense um, and they're like or otherwise locking a stop loss and profit and like the what like the, the remainder that's left on my trade and so again like if it was to come up here and take this wick above you know some kind of like if it just runs this high and like you get a, a move lower like immediately i would be you know i would probably honestly look to potentially take a scalp short there but i don't really think that that's as likely to happen um i do think that like, if we start to push back up to 20 you know getting back above here especially above here um this i'm not going to spend too much time talking about because i'm already kind of like getting to the time limit of the video and want to go too much over but like when i have this key level multiple daily sr level like this um, especially like back in, there was, there was a few instances, there's quite a few instances of this, but I remember a distinct instance in 2021 where like these levels, they just work really well. And obviously we're below that from a support resistance perspective. The part of the reason why this level is still on my chart is because for like higher time frame closes, we start to get back above 27,000, like a back, basically back above these levels. Uh, it, it's, it's going to change my opinion very likely. Um, and then I'd be, you know, that would kind of give me the opinion that like, we're going to push up decently higher, like back to 29 K, something like that. Um, so anyway, that's kind of my opinion. Now, as far as immediate trades go right here, right now, um, I think like what's a bit more probable. And again, we're coming into the end of the week. I think tomorrow's going to be vault. I mean, we've already had it. We've had a really big news week. Obviously, we have the the you know the the Israel Hamas discussion that's been happening since last week, and you've had uh, you had CPI today. You have, I mean, it's just been like uh, there's a lot of news going around, right? So like this has been a pretty this is gonna be a pretty interesting weekly close. Uh, what's a bit more likely to me? I do think that it's pretty fair um, to to be looking for these lows to get ran and potentially give that swing failure pattern trade. It might not. Who knows? It could just move to the downside. <laughs> um and you know there's a couple levels there's a couple levels below this that i think are really interesting which i mean the interesting levels you can clearly see on my chart as far as like where i would look um for you know more potential like like more trades this is a pretty clean one um really good confluence like the weekly and daily naked point of control sitting right on this untapped weekly sr level that's usually a pretty good instance uh, to like be aware of this and then for me, like what's a big, big level, which you can see I have an alert here, actually, to alert me in case this does happen. Um, but if we start to take this and we don't have, like let's say that we come down to this weekly, doesn't really give us much in the way of support. I think at that point, it's like incredibly likely that we're going to come down back down to like mid 25K, which I think at that point, again, like the risk reward for looking for it, like uh, as far as like a long, I think like is decent risk reward. I certainly... If we do see mid 25s and, you know, I'll be paying a lot of attention um, to kind of like what happens as we're coming into these levels. But I like for myself and what I'm aiming for, for my remaining short position, I'm probably going to be done there and reevaluate because that's that will have been a pretty substantial move. But again, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a reaction based trader. Um, basically want to see what happens as and you see that i set alerts so a lot of alerts here i have another alert here um but basically as price comes into my alerts see what it looks like um anyway so those are some of the levels below that are of interest um that we could see very clear uh, you know very quickly to be honest um especially if we start to run these lows and again it's, you don't get the swing failure pattern like if it's just a straight nuke it, i'm not gonna be sitting here trying to long every single red candle right um, like that's a very specific setup that I had given earlier for the upside. Same thing again, this would be more, probably more of a scalp. Like if we got another push up to 27, 27,100, something like that, that, that to me, the reason why I like, um, trades like that as well is because I have a very clearly defined, um, reason to get out. Like I have a very clear invalidation for myself. Anything that I was to get short here, we start to push above these levels. Like I'm definitely out. Right. So I have a very clear defined um risk on that which to me that's a very important part of the trade is knowing where i'm likely wrong um and as long as I, I i know that and the again like the risk makes sense to take the trade i'm gonna take it every single time so focus on a bit more lower time frame stuff 
Um, I might do another public video over the weekend uh, that may be a bit more kind of like going back to doing a little higher time frame analysis to see if kind of again what kind of what I'm curious what happens um, when you have ES closing tomorrow you, or you know you have a lot of um, you have a big weekly close and they're kind of assessing um, what the next couple of weeks might look like after that. So that's maybe a video that I'll do this weekend. If you want that video, if you can leave a like, I'd greatly appreciate it. It definitely helps push my content out to um, other people who might be interested in this stuff. And if you're not a subscriber yet, if you could give the channel a subscribe, I'd uh, greatly appreciate it because that obviously helps as well. So with that being said, hope you have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you in the Discord. Trade safe out there. See you on the next one.